and welcome to Creature Concepting in Maya and ZBrush. I'm Justin Marshall, and over the next few hours, I'll take you from a blank ZBrush canvas to a finished character sculpt. Now, this sculpt can be used to then create production geometry for film or games. I'll be creating a specific character, but as we go through each lesson, feel free to change the specific details and really make it your own. The key is learning the tools and processes, but don't feel like you have to make it look exactly like mine. Just keep in mind some of the lessons down the road may apply differently based on the differences in our models. Also, don't be afraid to experiment. There are almost always multiple ways to get the results that we want, especially in programs like ZBrush and Maya, which have so many different options. So let's jump right in and build up a base mesh using Z spheres. So here we have just a blank ZBrush canvas. Everything should be default, so you shouldn't have to worry about uh, adding anything custom. And so what I wanna do is switch over my tool over here in the tool palette and I'm gonna choose Z-Sphere. And so Z-Spheres are just a way to quickly build up an armature, which is cool for building things like characters if you wanna work on proportions and things like that, add limbs, and let's go ahead and just, we'll start and see what happens. So I'm gonna go ahead and click and drag, and I'm just using a mouse right now. I'll quickly be switching over to a tablet, but for this, I'm gonna just use the mouse. So once I've drawn that out, I'm gonna immediately hit the T key to go to edit mode. So if you've used ZBrush, and hopefully you have some experience in ZBrush, you know, we're now in edit mode where we can edit our model. I'm also going to turn on the floor so that we can see our floor and I'm going to turn on perspective. Okay. So here we have our initial Z sphere. So now what we want to do is build up sort of a, a, a skeleton or armature. So think about, do you want a biped? Do you want a quadruped? Kind of the base underlying structure. And it's all going to be made of these spheres. And so let's say that this is going to be sort of the hip. And so, I want to be able to draw the arms and legs out. And so I want to turn on symmetry. So we'll go to transform. I'm going to turn on symmetry, make sure it's in the X. And here you can see our little cursor preview mirrored on both sides of the X. So when they pop together and they turn green, I know I'm in the center. So I'm going to go ahead and add another one, draw it out from the center. And now you can see that it's connected by some link spheres. So I'm going to go ahead and go to move. I'm just going to kind of move this up. And so what we're going to do is continue to add these Z spheres until we get kind of the overall structure of our model. So I wanna have him or her be a little hunched over. It's gonna be sort of lizard or bird inspired, maybe a little bit of an owl inspiration. And the character itself is going to be maybe something like a high ranking official, some kind of ambassador or something like that. So it's gonna be sort of upright, very proper, and the clothes are gonna be nice uh, according to their, their alien civilization. And so, let me give it a posture like that. I'm going to start to bring out the arms so we can draw out some shoulders. We can just draw out from the side here. And all of these Z-spheres, we can actually scale. So if it's not perfect the first time, that's totally fine. I'm going to go ahead and leave those as kind of hips and then draw out from those hips. And I'm going to pull this down and make this like the knee. Okay, so something like that. Let's continue to draw these out. And I'm going to give it kind of a dog leg here. So now we're coming back down to the ankle. So just hopping back and forth between draw and move. Pull this out. If you hold down shift, when you rotate, it'll pop to the side views and you can turn off perspective if you want to see without any sort of distortion. So then we can come in and kind of pull this out. I'm going to take this sort of toe here and I'm going to just scale it up a little bit because we want to kind of branch off from this to create two toes. Okay, I'm gonna move this out a bit. Now I wanna have a couple toes coming off of here. We can add those in different ways, but let's go ahead and add them to our Z-Sphere armature. So I'm just gonna add a small one here. I'm gonna pull that out, add another one right here. And we'll just kind of pull those out and go to the side. Now I'm gonna make these sort of flat. So we're actually sitting on the ground. All right. You can at any time scale up these joints if you want this joint to be a little bit bigger. Maybe this knee needs to be a little bit bigger. Or maybe he sort of needs to be bring his knees out a little bit more. Maybe something like that. You can look at it from the side. You can see sort of how balanced it is. We can also go to rotate and we can actually click on the joints themselves and we can rotate them, which is pretty nice. So you see that uh, maybe we need to bring this up a little bit to make it a little bit more balanced. We can do that and then bring the feet up once again, kind of fix that. All right. Let's go ahead and I'm going to scale down the hips, maybe scale up the chest a bit, bring the chest up, bring the shoulders up, 
And we're going to create sort of a default pose. Uh, sometimes you'll see T poses, or maybe you've seen it uh, referred to as an A pose or an M pose. And so we're going to do more of an A or M pose so that uh, it's still default. We'll have to get to all the geometry and rig it, but it's not the, uh, the full on T. So I'm going to go ahead and drag out the Z sphere for the elbow. And I'm going to make the arms a little bit longer than uh, you might normally. So I want them to have these really kind of lanky arms. So we'll go ahead and pull this out and we'll make this sort of the wrist. So something like that. You can scale the shoulder and move it. We want it to be you know, a little bit higher. And then we'll do the same thing that we did with the toes. I'm going to make basically three fingers here. And so we'll draw one out. And this Z-sphere armature that we're making, you know, we don't have to get too detailed because of some of the other techniques that we're going to be using later are going to give us the opportunity to add some of those other details. But if there are details that you know you want to have that are kind of large shapes, they can be added here. So I know I want a thumb. So I'm going to kind of bring this over, add another Z-sphere, just quickly moving back and forth between draw and move. And like I said, you don't necessarily have to have all of the joints perfect, but it will help if you can get them close. You can also make your draw size a little bit smaller if you're finding that you're moving stuff around and it keeps uh, moving things that you don't want to move. We can also, if we go to scale, we can actually scale up the entire finger if we click on the, the joint there. So I'm gonna make it a bit bigger, thinking that there, there are gonna be claws kind of on the end of it. Let's go ahead and add the head. So I'm gonna kind of bring this up. You're not gonna to get too much detail on the head. You basically, you just want kind of the, where it's coming off of the, the base there. So I've got it coming off kind of more towards the front and make this kind of a neck and then have it expand out into the head. And then the head you can, you know, you'll be able to scale and manipulate. We'll have to do a lot of manipulation there, but just want kind of a, an overall kind of size to it. So I feel something like this is pretty good. Okay. Now in order to see what this is going to look like as a piece of geometry, all you have to do is hit a on your keyboard. That'll give you a preview of the adaptive skin that's going to be created. Nothing is created right now. It's just a preview. So I can toggle back and forth. If you want to see the settings that it's using to create that preview of your adaptive skin, you can go in your tool palette to the adaptive skin area, open that up. And when we hit a, you can see the preview gets turned on and right now it's using a DynaMesh. Okay. We're going to get to DynaMesh, but for right now, I'm going to turn this off by just taking that slider down to zero. I'm going to hit a, and now it's going to do the regular, uh, adaptive skin, which will create, you can see the, the lines there. And so you can change your density. So we could do a lower density. You can also turn on your polyframe to see the actual uh, polygons. So you can change your density here. And so you can see it's creating the topology. Uh, we can see how it's creating the topology based on those Z spheres. So you can see we've got a kind of a symmetry line down the middle. You can see how those fingers are connected where it's, it's uh, much more high res down here than it kind of blends into the arm. Very, very stiff. But again, we're just looking at sort of making a base structure to be able to start from. So something like this will work. Obviously there are areas where there isn't any volume and, and things like that. For instance, here on the hips, I can see it might help me to move those in just a little bit. So I can always turn off that preview, go to move, pull those hips in a little bit, hit preview again and see how that looks. All right. So let's go ahead and end there. And then in the next lesson, we are going to start doing some rough sculpting. So we're going to take this guy, create the adaptive mesh from it, and then start to do some sculpting. And then it will end up with a DynaMesh that we can even sculpt further. So we'll do that next.